America's states have, for the most part, been part of the Union their whole lives. From the 13 colonies to Alaska and Hawaii, no state has ever known full independence. Except for nine, so naturally, I should talk about the only four that people care about. Vermont. The land we now know as Vermont used to be split between New York, New Hampshire, and Quebec. Until, like a phoenix from a pile of places that are a lot cooler than it, Vermont declared independence from its surrounding regions in 1777. Obviously, states usually aren't too happy about having their land stolen by a bunch of bumpkins. So Vermont formed a militia known as the Green Mountain Boys to defend itself, which is where Vermont gets its name. The Green Mountain Republic also passed its own constitution in 1777. According to Wikipedia, the constitution only outlawed adult slavery, so you can enslave children all day in Vermont. Also, Vermont actually had some countries recognize it as an independent country. These countries were the Netherlands, France, and the USA, mainly because they were all allies during the revolution. No American country is complete without border disputes, with Vermont claiming territory in New York and New Hampshire. The U.S. government warned Vermont to stay in their lane, threatening not to grant statehood if they didn't calm down. Vermont wanted statehood from the beginning, and in 1791, they got it. The year before, New York voted to grant Vermont statehood and began drawing a border between them. The border was finished on October 7, 1790, and in March 1791, Vermont became the 14th state. While researching this segment, I also saw a link to the Second Vermont Republic, which I assumed was some sort of Civil War secession thing, but turns out it was just a bunch of America haters in 2003, whose goal was to encourage the dissolution of the U.S. Hawaii. Hawaii wasn't independent like the other countries in this video, because it existed for a long time before America even existed. Hawaii was just another one of the many Polynesian kingdoms that settled in the area. In 1795, King Kamehameha the Great unified all of the modern Hawaiian islands. Later, Christian missionaries started turning up and doing the Christian missionary thing. No, not teaching the Bible, the other thing. Between 1780 and 1890, 85.2% of the Hawaiian population died from diseases like smallpox and tuberculosis. The missionaries also outlawed hula dancing, which, like, why? In 1840, under pressure from the British, Hawaii became a European-style monarchy, with all the dumb European stuff of their monarchies attached. After Kamehameha V died, yes, they were all named after Kamehameha, he was just that awesome. There was no heir, so they elected this guy, who was so insignificant to the story that he died the next year. Now Hawaii has no heir, and you have Europeans and Americans who think Hawaii is worth a lot of money. What could possibly go wrong? In 1887, the year that a certain shotgun was invented, the standing government for Hawaii was forced to sign a new constitution drafted by the U.S. and Britain that severely limited their power. When the new king died in 1891, his sister took over and became queen. In 1893, some fruit and sugar businessmen, backed by some hired goons and the U.S. Marine Corps, overthrew the government of Hawaii and elected Sanford B. Dole, who you might know as co-owner of the Dole Fruit Company, as president of Hawaii. A rebellion soon started with the queen as their leader. The resistance was later captured by the Hawaiian government, and that's where U.S. Congress stepped in. They claimed that landing marines and overthrowing the government was illegal, and demanded that the queen be reinstated. Hawaii said no. What would Congress do? A. Threaten the provisional government? B. Support the rebels? Or C issue a report finding the queen guilty of overthrowing her own government? The answer is C. Congress just switched sides. In 1898, under William McKinley, Congress voted to annex Hawaii, becoming the territory of Hawaii. California. California was independent during the Mexican-American War. Now, originally, I thought their origin story would be like that of Texas, declaring independence from Mexico and fighting alongside America. But nope, they were independent for 25 days and just led an insurgency against Mexico. They didn't even get fully annexed. The Americans just turned up one day, took down their atrocity of a flag, and raised the actually aesthetically pleasing American flag. Texas. Texas. You know Texas. Everyone knows Texas. I covered Texas in the Manifest Destiny video, which you should not watch because it sucks.
I hate that video a lot, so I want to do the story of Texas justice, and also, I like Tejas, so we're talking about it in this video. In the mid-1800s, Spain, Spain owned Texas, and wait, no, California Mexico owned Texas, Mexico and wait, California. the joke falls apart here. After Mexico gained independence, American settlers flocked to Texas in droves. This was all well and good until, until Mexico passed a new constitution which outlawed slavery and made Catholicism mandatory. The Texans were not happy about this and began organizing a military. In 1835, the Texan Revolution began, with the Texans fighting tooth and nail for Texan land. After less than a year of fighting, Texas was granted independence by Mexico, though so the two were still at odds. Internally, Texas had two main sides. On one side, led by President Sam Houston, advocated for Texas to join the U.S., while the other side wanted to take California and expand to the Pacific. And if you know me, there's nothing I love more than a big North American country. Eventually, the pro-U.S. side of the government won, and after 10 years as an independent republic, Texas was annexed, kicking off the Mexican-American War, which we will not be covering today. See ya!